being a witness being a witness is just like the tail on a dog. It's always there. No matter where the dog goes, it's always at that end. See? It's always there. It's a witness. Okay, I'm a Christian, so I'm a witness. I'm either a good one or I'm a bad one. Every person is a witness. Then the, the thing we ought to become is the quality of witness that God desires and that you become by knowing the word believing it and acting on it literally carrying it out this is why jesus said just before he ascended people just before he went up you shall absolutely be witnesses unto me then he said where in jerusalem in jerusalem That's where they were going to get it for the first time, right? The new birth, fullness of the Holy Spirit, Christ in. Then there were to be witnesses where? In where? Jerusalem. And Judea, that's the surrounding area. And then, holy smoke, even where? That is a dandy. Oh, no, Lord, don't get me out of Jerusalem. I got to stay with my buddies in the twig here, understand? Samaria, those terrible people from Samaria, they're not the right color or they don't worship the same. Not Samaria. Hey, remember a record in the gospel referred to as the Good Samaritan? A man had been injured. The priests came by, the Levites, the top religious leaders came by saw that poor fellow hurt there lying in the ditch. He said, hey, won't touch him. Get my hands dirty. It's Sunday morning or Saturday or something. I'm on my way to church or something. But a fellow from Samaria who is a nincompoop, a no-gooder, a counter, comes along, sees that poor fellow, and he helps him. Remember the record? Which one do you think, or who do you think stood before God in approval? The good Samaritan. Now, these Samaritan were despised people. They were looked down on, you know, by the religious leaders of Judaism. And yet the word was, witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and among all of those people you don't like. If you really love God, you really, really love the unlovable too. Sometimes a little difficult. You'd rather hit him in the nose than <laughs> love him. But you cannot afford to do that if you love God and love his word and walk for his wonderful son, Jesus Christ, as a witness. People have said to me hundreds of times, why don't I fight all the criticism we get? People, if I fought all the time, I couldn't work the word and teach it. And the word's more important than the stupid fighting. They got the problem. I don't have the problem. They got it. It's me. And the word. They got the problem. If I wrote articles every time somebody acts about some, wouldn't get anything done on moving the word. We're not to be defense attorneys. I don't have to defend four crucified with Jesus. I don't have to defend he died on Wednesday. All I have to do is read it to people. That's all. I don't have to defend it. We are not defense attorney. We're what? Witnesses, people. Witnesses. Don't you see it? It doesn't pay you one iota good to argue with anybody. That's right. An argument never settles anything. You know, as husbands and wives have tried it often enough. (laughs) We know that. But if we love one another as husband and wife, if we love one another as believers, then we can arrive at satisfactory solutions. You're to be witnesses, not defense attorneys. Not only in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, but you know what? Uttermost part of what? That's New Knoxville. (laughs) The uttermost part of the earth is where you are. Every place, every place, every place, wherever we go, wherever we live, wherever we are, we are what? 
witnesses. <laughs> well, bless the Lord. It says in verse 9, And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he, Jesus Christ, was what? Taken up. That's the ascension. And a cloud received him, Jesus Christ, out of their sight. In other words, he went up, a cloud engulfed him, and that was it. But, verse 10, while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as they looked up, as he went up, behold, two men, two specially delegated angels, appearing as men, stood by them in white apparel. Verse 11, which also said, ye men of what? Wow, that's a dandy. Eleven of the twelve apostles were Galileans. One of the twelve was a Judean, and his name was Judas Iscariot. Judas, the betrayer of the Lord Jesus Christ, was from the city of Iscar in southern Judea. That's why he was called Judas Iscariot, Judas from the city of Iscar. On the day of the ascension, up until this time, all twelve apostles were there. Then, right after the ascension, and before these two special delegates from God said anything, somebody must have split out. Who was that somebody? You talk about the accuracy of the word and the minute dividing of it. God handles it so beautifully. There were only 11 left, and all 11 of those were from where? Galilee. Galilee. So Judas split, and that's why these two representatives of God said, Ye men of what? Galilee. Why? Stand ye gazing up into heaven. <laughs> this must have happened some, you know, a little bit of while after the ascension. They must still be standing there looking. Hey, I wonder if he's coming back, I wonder. I wonder if he's coming back. Maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I don't know. But it must have been some time because the word says, they said, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Because Jesus had told them once he'd gone up, they should go back where? But they hadn't gone back to Jerusalem yet, had they? They were still up there gawking, looking, right? Still looking. They had not yet acted literally on the word and gone back to Jerusalem, right? That's what this word says. That's why the men said to them, what you standing here gazing for? And then this great truth. The same Jesus. People, the same Jesus. Not a counterfeit, not a different, but the same one which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come, shall so come, is shall show return, is the text, in like manner as ye have seen him go. Where? There it is. If he went, he's going to do what? That's right. And all history, even secular, pagan, unbelieving history, corroborates and validates the resurrection. That there was a resurrection. That is real easy for me to understand. People in this community and other communities I've been, if there's even a fire, they all run over to see it. I want to tell you a fire or the burning of a house or a barn or an automobile is nothing compared to a man who's been dead three days and three nights in a sepulcher with a big old stone rolled over it. And the sepulcher empty except for the grave clothes still laying there undisturbed but the body isn't in it. I want to tell you Houdini's a piker, or was. <laughs> if I'd have been in Jerusalem, I'd have been there too. 
Because in all the history of the world, no one had ever gotten up out of the grave clothes undisturbed or anything else. I'd have been looking down in that hole too. That's why it's the best attested fact of all history that Jesus Christ arose and that he ascended and that what he gave on the day of Pentecost was this power from on high to be witnesses with. And tonight, on this May 31st, 1981, I stand here before you a witness. And this is it. Lo shanta imalakasito kanaino, speaking in tongues, is the external proof in the senses world of the internal reality of Christ in me. Now, sir, Christ could not be in me if God had not what? Raised him. And if God had not ascended him, and if God had not sent that on the day of Pentecost, I could not have Christ in me. He's a living reality. And every born-again believer is a proof of the reality of Christ. For it's Christ in you, Christ in you, Christ in you, Christ in you. When Jesus Christ was here upon earth, he was just one man at one place at one time. If he was Jesus Christ, that would have been all, right? But boy, it's much bigger than that today. On the day of Pentecost, honey, it became a reality for the first time in the history of civilization of the world. Had Satan known it, he never would have crucified him. Jesus Christ in you, 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 you. Every place where people walk with Christ in them, they're witnesses of the resurrected power of Christ. And he's coming back, people. <laughs> Boy. Man, the same Jesus that went up the same one that's coming back. And when's he coming? I don't know. But I know he's coming. No man knoweth the day or hour. But I know he's coming. And I know all my praying is not going to bring him or retard him. He's coming when the fullness of time comes again. And the word says that when the body is full. When is that? I don't know, but if you and I keep witnessing, it'll be full someday. And then God will send his son from heaven again. And this time when he comes back, ah, oh, people, he's coming back as king of kings and lord of lords. First time he came, you know, in a little old place in Bethlehem, and then the king tried to kill him and all that stuff he went through. You know, they spit on him, they crowned him with the thorns, they nailed him to a cross. He died like a lamb, remember? When he comes back, no man's going to lay hands on him. The word says he's coming back as king of kings and lord of lords. And he is coming back in judgment. What a day that's going to be. But you and I won't be here, for we will have gone to be with him. For the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The rest of the unbelievers down here will have the experience. They need it. They're going to get it. <laughs> See? That's right. Nobody's going to nail him to a cross. Nobody's going to call him a son of a bee or something. That's right. Because he comes back as Lord of Lord and King of Kings, people. For he's God Almighty's only begotten Son, clothed with all the power that God makes available to him. What a day, what a day. This same Jesus, this same Jesus, same Jesus coming back. Then it says, they did go to Jerusalem. <laughs> they did go to Jerusalem. Then returned they, next verse, to where? Jerusalem. And next Sunday, Pentecost, we'll see what happened in Jerusalem. <laughs> thank you. Father, we sure love you and thank you for the beauty of this night. Thank you for all your tenderness, your grace, and oh, Heavenly Father, how thankful I am tonight for your wonderful Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ that he lived, that he died, that you raised him from the dead, that you ascended him. And that he's coming back as King of kings and Lord of lords. But in the meantime, he's living in us. That we can do the work that he did. That we can move forth with the greatness of the power of God. That once again in our day and time, men and women may see your only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ.